Hey everyone, this is Mr. Wistar. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to use constant variables, which sounds like an oxymoron, but it's actually a special kind of variable that holds a value that isn't going to change. We'll talk about the syntax for creating constants, and then we'll talk about some tips for why you should use them and um, the rules for style that you need in order to use them effectively. So, a constant, uh, according to your book, which I think is a pretty decent definition, um, is that it's a value that does not change and it has special significance for some sort of computation. Um, that doesn't have to be a numeric variable. You can have constants that are strings um, or other variables too. But the two really important parts of that definition are one, that the value never changes after you give it its initial value, and two, that the value has some meaning that you can give a name to. Uh, as you'll see, that's one of the big reasons why we want to use constant variables. So, uh, as a couple of examples down here below, um, if you have special math symbols like the value pi, or e, or the maximum uh, value of an integer, um, that would be one example. Or, just in a more individual case, if you were writing a program and you needed to specify the size of a particular part of your graphics window or uh, a certain value for the starting um, number of stones in your game. Those are all examples of values that have significance and that you should specify with um, a constant. So the syntax for constants involves this new keyword, final. Anytime you put final before the declaration of a variable, it makes the variable a constant. And again, the value of a constant cannot change, which means you need to assign it a value on the same line that you created because after that, you know, that's it. That's your only chance to give it a value because it's not going to change. So most of our variables that we make constants, in addition to being final, we also declare them as being public and being static. So public we're already familiar with. If you make a variable public, it becomes available to objects in other classes outside of this one. And that's okay with constants because they're never going to change. And a lot of times other classes need access to those values because it helps them figure out how a certain class is going to work. Um, as far as static goes, without getting into too much detail about that, when you see the word static you should just think, well, a static variable is only going to be ever one of that variable. No matter how many objects of a certain class you create, they all share the same copy of that variable. And in this case, since it's a constant, that's a good idea. Why create 500 copies of the same variable if they all have the same value? So most of the time when you make constants, you're going to make them final, public, and static, like you see down here. So public, static, final, int, max gets 100. There are a lot of different benefits to using constants in our programs, but let's just go over a couple of the biggest ones. The biggest one for you as the programmer is it helps protect you from yourself. It prevents you from copy and paste errors. If you are trying to use the same value in 13 different places in your program, I guarantee you that when it comes time to change it, you're going to only remember 12 of those places, especially if the same uh, numerical or string value is being used in different contexts. So how do you know that this 5 means this and that 5 means that? If you use constant variables, you don't ever have to worry about that. Um, and that way, you just use the name of the constant everywhere. Uh, and then, like it says in the second bullet point, making a change to that value only has to happen in one place. You just go back up to the top where you created the constant and just change the value that you assign it to. And that will immediately make that change to every single place in your program where you use that. So not only does it prevent you from making errors, but it saves you a lot of time. And then lastly, uh, and also importantly, it makes your programs easier to read. Okay, Nobody likes to have to look at the numbers in your program and then have to try to remember what they mean. If you use a name, then people can just read the name and it makes your programs a lot easier to understand. As far as the syntax rules for constants, the biggest one is that a constant variable's name should be in caps, all caps. And that's how, just by looking at it, you can tell immediately that it's a constant. Remember that most variables start with lowercase letters. Most methods start with lowercase letters. Most classes start with uppercase letters. 
but constants are almost always written in all caps. And that, by the way, that means if you have a constant that has multiple words in the name, you might want to put underscores in between those words because you're not going to be able to um, capitalize the letter of each word since they're already capitalized. Now, when do you need to use constants? Well, you need to use constants to replace what we call magic numbers. Magic numbers is just a programming term for any number in your program that has some sort of significance. And your book in the style guide at the end lays out pretty clearly the rule. The only kind of numeric values that you don't need to use constants for are the ones that are listed there. Negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Any other number that you're using in your program has some meaning and you need to represent it with a constant. I know that seems like a lot of overkill, but trust me, when you start using constants, you'll understand the benefit for them and you'll just get in the habit of using them. So from now on, in coding style, I'm going to expect that you use constant variables for any numeric values that don't uh, fall into this very small set of numbers. Lastly, uh, again, um, make your constants public and static. That's not strictly speaking required, but it's good style and it's good programming practice. So let's take a look at an example. So here we are with our Game of NIM program. Right away, if we take a look at our code, looking through here, here are a couple of examples of constants that I've already created because that way when I see the word user I know whose turn it is. I don't have to remember that the number one equals user and the number two equals computer. I can just look at the name. But looking down through the list here, let's take a look. So uh, that seems fine. Negative one, negative one, but uh, right here, 25, that's a magic number. That needs to be replaced with some sort of a named constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up here to the top again. I'm going to make my variable public, static, and final. It's an int, and then I need to think of a decent name for it. So I'm going to call it max stones. I'm going to give it the value 25. So Now in the case of my game of NIM program, I'm only using that number in one place. So you might say, well, that didn't really save us a whole lot of work. But if we were using it in 2, 3, 4, 20 different places in our program, our life would get uh, a lot easier. Because if I wanted to, say, make my NIM game start with 50 stones, I just have to go up to the top and change it right there. Okay, so in this lab we talked about how to make constants, which are variables whose values don't change. And we use those to help make it easier for us to write programs that are readable and also make changes to these named global values in a much easier fashion. We want to make our constants uh, final and public and static. And we have to assign them a value at the time that we create them, not uh, any other place in our program. Okay, you're all set.